What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Kicks with Krish. In today's video, I want to essentially make an episode two to how to start your own sneaker restoration business. So in episode one, I covered where to buy and source shoe sneakers. So if you do want to check that video out, I'll throw down the information card above. But essentially in this episode, I want to talk about all the supplies you'll actually need to restore your shoes. Essentially, I have them all beside me in like a large pile. I'll just be going one by one through all of them. I'm not going to be like putting them in any particular order. I should be talking about everything you'll need. I just want to make this video to make an entire cohesive list. And then everything, you know, don't worry, this, since there is a lot of stuff, I will be uh, pretty much putting the description of the item and then the name of the item in the description below. So if you know you ever forget anything uh, throughout the video, or you just want to double check at the end of the list. If you have everything, everything will be down in the description below. First supply I'll be talking about is Angelus Soulbright. This is essentially a branded version of Salon Care 40. Both do the same job and I would recommend going to your local salon and just asking to purchase a large bottle of Salon Care 40 because it saves you a ton of money and essentially does the same job. The purpose of this paste-like solution is to deoxidize your sneakers. If you ever see yellowing on the midsoles or soles of your sneaker, this solution brings the shoe back to its original color. Once the solution is placed onto the sneakers, they just need to sit in a source of UV light like either the sun or black light and your shoes will become deoxidized. Next up we have shoe trees. You don't need anything fancy, literally just any adjustable shoe tree. These actually have two uses to them. The first is to keep the shape or reshape the shoe while you're scrubbing or cleaning the sneaker. And the second use comes when you're destroying the sneaker and you want to keep its original shape. Third up on the list is any type of clear matte spray finish. The entire purpose of this is when you're done repainting the shoe, you need to protect the paint job. This clear finish will do exactly that and we get a matte finish so you can't tell the shoe is even sprayed versus compared to if you got a gloss finish. Next up we have masking tape. And as simple as the supply is, this is one of the most essential ones on the list. We use the masking tape to mask off any part of the sneaker we don't want to damage with paint, acetone, or any other solution. Since I just brought up acetone, let's talk about that next. Acetone is the chemical which is commonly found in nail polish remover, but it's diluted in there so you should buy pure acetone instead for restoring sneakers. This is used to remove any old paint and the factory finish on a sneaker, and this gives you a clean canvas to start whenever you're doing your paint jobs. Next up, I'm putting contact cement and super glue in the same category because they essentially serve the same purpose just on different scales. Super glue is to repair smaller rips and pieces on the sneaker, while contact cement is heavy duty and for larger repair jobs like the entire sole of a sneaker ripping off. Next we have sneaker laundry bags. Again, this may look like a pretty useless item, but it's essential and it makes your time a lot more convenient. The main purpose is to keep small items like laces from getting lost in the washing machine and it prevents the shoes from directly rubbing against each other in the wash. Sneaker cleaning brushes. I use the Rejuvenator brand just because they have the most variety and there are three main brushes you need from them. A soft bristle brush to clean the uppers of the shoes, a medium bristle brush for the midsoles, and a stiff bristle brush for the actual soles of the sneaker. If we have our brushes, we obviously need a sneaker cleaning liquid solution as well. In this category, there are a bunch of brands, but again, I use Rejuvenator just because you can buy a starter kit with the brushes and solution in there. This is used to clean most of the dirt off the shoes before you put them in the wash, and the little compactable cleaning bowl is obviously optional, but I just bought it because it's the perfect size for the brushes we use. Shoe paint. I think every sneaker restorer uses Angelus leather paints since these are very high quality for all types of sneaker materials. I currently only have primary colors, but in the future, I'll make a video on how to color match and the color theory behind making new colors to get exact matches for sneakers. I have no idea why I bought so many cotton balls, but all these are for is literally just to apply the acetone on the sneaker without damaging the material and giving it an even coat. You specifically need microfiber towels because when you're cleaning a sneaker, it can get very soapy. And these towels absorb the most moisture, so you can easily wipe away the suds and see the areas you missed with a brush compared to a paper towel. Sandpaper. I recommend getting 220 grit since it's fine enough to not damage any materials on your sneaker and the sandpaper is to prep the surface before you paint it to make sure that the paint sticks correctly. Lint shaver. This supply is optional but I think it really helps when selling the shoes. After it is washed many lint balls may appear on the tongue and the inside of the sneaker. By shaving all of these off it really gives the shoe that brand new look and feel. Lastly, you need detergent to obviously use when you're washing your shoes in the laundry machine. I know there are specific laundry sneaker detergents, but honestly they just overcharge you and literally any household laundry detergent will do the exact same job. That's essentially going to conclude today's video and that's kind of all the supplies you actually need to start your own sneaker restoration business. Next episode I'll talk about how you actually like my process of actually restoring a shoe. Then we'll talk about marketing and scaling your business. But the one thing I didn't touch in today's video is actually the prices I paid for all of these. Since I was a beginner I did overpay for some stuff and then some stuff I could have bought in bulk. So if you are interested in getting the best price for yourself and you're actually interested in starting this business, just DM me on Instagram or message me on Discord. I'll be more than happy to help you over there. But besides that I hope you found value and you learned something new today 
today's episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one.